According to Psychology Today, the bystander effect occurs when the presence of others discourages an individual from intervening in an emergency situation. People will not react to an emergency situation because they feel that other people will take on responsibility so that they don't have to. They are afraid of what consequences might come from standing out above everyone else, and they do not want to break the social norm of a certain situation. A bystander is someone who chooses to avoid intervening in particular situations. Shanda Scherer was a 12-year-old girl who was abducted from her home in Pineville, Kentucky on the night of January 10, 1992 by Lori Tackett, 17 years old, Hope Rippey, 15 years old, Melinda Loveless, 16 years old, and Tony Lawrence, 15 years old. The girls kidnapped her because they believed that Sharer stole Loveless's girlfriend, Amanda Hervin, and tortured her at a local abandoned house the locals called the Witch's Castle. Tony Lawrence and Hope Rippey claimed to have wanted out of the situation by this point, but did not dare try to run and call the police. Lawrence was scared to death by this point and finally called a friend of the same age and told her what had happened. She refused to call the police, now out of fear as an accomplice, even though Lawrence ultimately called a friend to inform them. That person didn't even attempt to call the police or come and let the girls stop what they were doing to share her. They made Shara undress, Tackett and Rippy beat her with her fist. Melinda Loveless repeatedly smashed Shara's face into her knee, making Shara's mouth bleed due to her braces. Loveless tried to slash her throat with a knife, but it was too dull. Rippy got out of the car so that Tackett and Loveless could stab her in the chest. They each took turns to stab her. Then they strangled her with a rope until she became unconscious. Lastly, wrapped her, they wrapped her up in a blanket and filled a 2-liter Pepsi bottle up with gasoline so that they could then use it to help set her on fire. Since neither Lawrence or Rippy refused to go to the cops, Shanda Shara ended up dying that night. Both of the girls realized the emergency at hand before Shara began to be stabbed. However, neither of them spoke up out of fear that Loveless and Tackett would kill one of them too, or that they could go to jail for kidnapping Shanda. Both of the girls didn't assume any responsibility because they thought that the other were taken into hand. It wasn't until after Shanda was already burned alive that Tony decided it was time to call the cops. <laughs> In exchange for Tony Lawrence's cooperation, she allowed to plead guilty to one count of criminal confinement and was sentenced to a maximum of 20 years. Laurie Tackett and Melinda Loveless were sentenced to 60 years in the Indiana Women's Prison in Indianapolis. With maximum time reduced for good behavior, they could be released in 2020. Rippy was sentenced to 60 years, with 10 years suspended for mitigating circumstances, plus 10 years of medium supervision probation. On appeals, a judge reduced the sentence to 35 years. Tony Lawrence was released on December 14th of 2000 after serving nine years. She remained on parole until December 2002. On April 28th of 2006, Hope Rippey was released from Indiana Women's Prison on parole after serving 14 years of her original sentence. She remained on supervised parole for five years. An upstander is someone who recognizes when something is wrong and acts to make it right. When an upstander sees or hears about someone being bullied, they speak up. The Bully Project's mission statement is being an upstander is being a hero. We are standing up for what is right and doing our best to help, support, and protect someone who is being hurt. James O'Vernon, a 75-year-old resident of Morton, Illinois, demonstrated what it means to be an upstander. On October 13th of 2015, a 19-year-old male entered the, a library with knives in each hand and started yelling at 17 children and 4 women who were also in the library. Vernon confronted the teen, which allowed him and the, the women and children to exit safely. However, the teen swung his knife and cut Vernon's hand. Vernon still continued to fight the teen and pinned him on the top of the table. The authorities took the teen away from Vernon's hand and was treated with surgery. The difference between a bystander and an upstander is similar to that of the difference between potential and kinetic energy in science. 
a bystander or a potential energy has the ability to intervene and help, yet they stay back and remain at the peak of the hill, motionless. The upstander also has the ability to intervene, but unlike the bystander, they use what energy they have to rush in and put a stop to the situation at hand, regardless of any risk they may be taking that could jeopardize themselves.